The Honorable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm pleased to rise in the House to speak to this bill, a bill which I think that uh, it's very clear that the member from Desnethi, um, Missinippi, Churchill, uh, has the best of intentions. But with great regret, Mr. Speaker, I have to join those who would be opposed to this bill. And for the most part, it's not because of the substantive changes that the member has brought forward, which a number of the members in his party has spoken for. Mr. Speaker, the main problem with this bill is, is that it is breaking the very constitutional obligation for advanced consultation, consideration and accommodation. Mr. Speaker, if I could just go to the opening preamble of the member's bill. Um, my concern with the preamble is the reference to the commitment of the Government of Canada to exploring creative options for development of new legislation in collaboration with, and I quote, First Nation organizations that have demonstrated an interest in this work. But right off the bat, Mr. Speaker, what the member is doing is narrowing the very constitutional obligation to consult with all First Nations. For perhaps this was unintentional, and I'm sure that the member might want to reconsider that because I think his intentions are in the best for his fellow First Nations. It does fail to reference First Nation governments, and that will derogate from that overriding constitutional obligation. The bill does propose, as a number of the members have pointed out, and the member who tabled the bill has pointed out, proposes a number of measures to rescind or amend uh, provisions in the Indian Act. For example, uh, specific provisions to do with residential schools, wills and estates, the duty to attend school, uh, the process for, for enacting banned bylaws, and the sale of produce. Few would oppose uh, the right of Canadian First Nations to make these kinds of decisions for their own peoples. The problem, Mr. Speaker, is not with the intention of passing over those powers. The problem is the way in which this member has gone about this. Another uh, measure, Mr. Speaker, that I find uh, problems with is that the member, um, well, first of all, he does require, and this is a good provision, um, if the rest of the bill could stand and if it had been consulted on in advance, would require the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs to report uh, annually to the Aboriginal Affairs Committee on actions taken to uh, replace the Indian Act. Um, what would have been preferable under such a bill, and I would have thought the First Nations would agree, is that the report should be to Parliament, which is normally what happens when you have a, a matter of, of interest to this place. Um, of course, that should be the duty of prior consultation. In tabling the bill, the Honourable Member suggested that Section 2 of the bill requires a collaboration, a collaborative con consult... Cons let me start that again, Mr. Speaker. The member has suggested when he tabled the bill that this section of the bill where the uh, minister would have to report to the committee also requires that uh, there be a collaborative consultation process between First Nations and the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs on the Indian Act. Regrettably, there is no such provision in, in this bill and it probably would have been a useful one and certainly supported by the First Nations. Mr. Speaker, the biggest problem with this bill is on the very matter of the duty to consult. And as I mentioned, Mr. Speaker, and is known to uh, the members in this place and, and should be known, is there is an overriding constitutional duty to consult. That duty was upheld, uh, first of all, in the famous Miccosukee Cree case, uh, which originated from my province with the Miccosukee Cree First Nation and has been repeated in num numerous cases since. And that duty is on the Government of Canada to advance consultation, consideration and accommodation of First Nation people's um, interests before any um, decision is made by the Government of Canada. That duty is again reiterated in the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples um, in both Article 18 and 19. Article 18, Mr. Speaker, says Indigenous peoples have the right to participate in decision making in matters which would affect their rights through representatives chosen by themselves in accordance with their own procedures, as well as to maintain and develop their own Indigenous decision-making decisions. Article 19, states shall consult and cooperate in good faith with Indigenous peoples concerned through their own representative institutions in order to obtain their free prior and informed consent 
before adopting or implementing legislative administrative measures that may affect them. At the Crown First Nation gathering, as a number of the members have pointed out, I believe that the member who tabled the bill also pointed this out, that the Prime Minister made certain commitments regarded to the Indian Act. And if I can quote back to you, uh, Mr. Speaker, the words of the Prime Minister at that gathering. To be sure, our government has no grand scheme to repeal or unilaterally rewrite the Indian Act. So he undertook that he would work in collaboration with the First Nations should any changes be made to the Indian Act. The member for Desnethe Missinippi Churchill has advised the House that he had consulted First Nations in the development of this bill and had found support. Um, I conferred, uh, Mr. Speaker, with a number of First Nations, in particular in the Prairies, to confirm that their views have been expressed and determine their views so that I could share those in the House. Mr. Speaker, this is what I've been able to determine. Uh, in the First Nations that I was able to reach in Alberta, um, I was advised that several presentations were made by the member to Alberta First Nations after the tabling of the bill. So that's not the case of advanced uh, consultation. Both sessions brought to my attention were ticketed events at a cost of $575, including for students. The notice for these meetings clearly said, space is limited, this is not consultation. Alberta Treaty 8 Chief Rose Lubicon, who is the regional chief responsible for legislation, advised me today that neither she nor her First Nation had been consulted in the drafting of the bill. I also contacted Mr. Speaker, Saskatchewan First Nations, and I was provided with the following information. Um, the uh, Saskatchewan, the Assembly of Chiefs of Saskatchewan, the Federation of Chiefs of, of Indian Nations, were so upset by the presentation made by the member that they issued a series of press releases, and if I can share uh, with you, Mr. Speaker. This is from their, their uh, issued press release. First Nation leaders attending the Federation of Saskatchewan Indian Nations Legislative Assembly were outraged and insulted by the Member of Parliament for Desnethe Missinippi Churchill presentation on his proposed private member's bill 428. Mr. Clark requested uh, due to his ongoing work on this bill that he wouldn't allow questions from the floor at our legislative assembly. The chiefs were not consulted, nor do we view his attendance yesterday as a form of consultation on what Mr. Clark is trying to undertake with his proposed amendments to the Indian Act. This is a furthering of the white paper policy of 1969, said Vice Chief Morley Watson. He then, uh, the, the chief uh, then stated, this is Vice Chief Chief Watson, if you read the bill as presented, there are grave concerns. It's designed to bring into reality the steps to get rid of the Indian Act. The member is putting in place the steps needed to accomplish this tax, task. There are many... Point of order, the Honourable Member. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I believe the member was referring to a member of this House by name other than the name of the constituency. Um, and so I'd ask that, uh, Mr. Speaker, that... Uh, you ensure that members are referred to by the name of their district rather than by their first or last name. Quoted it in your press release. Great. I quote, I did not say the name of the member. I said the member for the constituency, Mr. I did not hear that. Uh, obviously, the member knows from Edmonton Strathcona, having been here, that she's not to use an individual name and only the writing designation. Um, but I did not hear her use the individual Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As you will probably confirm, I actually conferred with you in advance to find out if I could say the, the uh, name of the member, and you confirm with me that I have to say the, the name of his writing, and I apologize if I'm having trouble with uh, the pronunciation. I'm doing my best. Continuing on, if you read the bill as presented, this, these are the words of Vice Chief Watson. If you read the bill as presented, there is grave concerns. It is designed to bring into reality the steps to get rid of the Indian Act, the member is putting in place the steps needed to accomplish this task. There are many issues with the Indian Act, and this private member's bill will not go ahead with the full inclusion and support of all First Nations. The uh, Federation of Saskatchewan Indian Nations has a consultation policy, and the federal government needs to recognize our, in our inherent sovereign and treaty rights. In the second release, Mr. Speaker, um, the member state. The Member of Parliament for uh, Desnethe Missinippi Churchill River addressed Chiefs and Assembly regarding his private member's bill 
C-428 to amend the Indian Act. The approach used by Mr. Clark to not take any questions from the Chiefs and Assembly offended and disgusted his... No, you just repeated the member's name, family name. Didn't I just say the member? <laughs> okay, sorry. The, the approach used by the member to not take any questions from the Chiefs and Assembly offended and disgusted his audience. The Federation has sent a formal response letter to the Prime Minister's office regarding this bill. How's my time, Mr. Speaker? Okay. Uh, there was a third release. Um, in October expressing strong concerns with the bill. I won't read that out to you again, but uh, strong concerns with the, the process followed. Um, in closing, Mr. Speaker, I will um, share the words of the National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations. And he has expressed concern. Federal attempts to repair the much-hated Indian Act are not going to work because First Nations have not been involved in designing the way forward. He then said, um, Ottawa has taken a piecemeal approach to First Nation reform, fiddling with education here, safe drinking water there, without tackling the fundamental problem of Aboriginal, Ab Aboriginal treaties and rights not being respected. You've got to do them all at the same time. They are one piece. So in closing, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I commend the member for coming forward and trying to spur uh, changes in this avenue, but regrettably, um, there does not appear to have been sufficient prior consultation and therefore we cannot support the bill. Resuming debate.